boundless expanse before the birth of time, there existed a primordial void. Within this indistinct sea of potential, there were no stars, no planets, no gods nor mortals. There was only the infinite abyss, an eternity of nothingness where time itself seemed to stand still. Chaos, a primal feature of the universe and a shadowy realm of mass and energy, was an ineffable and formless deity, emerged at the dawn of creation, existing in the space between heaven and earth. Chaos was both a state of being and a deity in its own right, an ancient force that defied definition. Its shapeless mass and vast, endless void was a concept beyond the comprehension of mortals, an abstract embodiment of the universe's potential and uncertainty. In the presence of chaos, time seemed to lose its meaning and the laws of reality were but a distant echo. It was as if the very essence of creation lay suspended, waiting for the right moment to burst forth with life and energy. Within this swirling chasm of limitless potential, the cosmic forces intertwined in a cosmic dance, awaiting the spark of creation. Out of the depths of this enigmatic void, something wondrous began to take shape. These whispers coalesced and swirled, forming into primordial entities. The protogenoi, personifications of the elemental forces that would shape the universe. Gaia, the magnificent Earth herself, followed chaos in quick succession, emerging from the depths of the abyss. With grace and majesty, she stretched her vast and fertile form across the chasm, becoming the very foundation upon which existence would unfold. The primordial goddess possessed a profound connection to the very essence of existence. She held the world in her loving embrace, cradling it like a precious jewel amidst the vastness of the cosmos. Every valley, every mountain, every river and every tree owed its existence to her divine touch. Her heart beat with the rhythm of life, and with each beat, new creatures emerged from her fertile soil. Majestic creatures roamed her fields and forests, their beauty mirroring the splendor of their creator, her flowing tresses cascading like the verdant forest that adorned her lands, and her eyes shining with the wisdom of the ages. In her domain, Gaia reigned as the queen of abundance and fertility. Fields of golden wheat swayed in the breeze, and vineyards bore succulent fruits that delighted both gods and mortals alike. The bounty of the earth was a gift from Gaia's generous heart, a testament to her love for all living beings. Gaia, in her infinite wisdom, became the bringer of life and creation, birthing the next generation of gods. In the depths of the ancient cosmos, where the boundaries between the mortal world and the divine realm blurred, there existed a place of unfathomable darkness and eternal torment known as Tartarus. Tartarus, the embodiment of the underworld, also emerged from the depths of the endless abyss, serving as both a personification and a location. Tartarus was not a realm for the faint of heart. It was a realm of retribution, a place where those who had incurred the wrath of the gods found themselves condemned to suffer for all eternity. Within the inky depths of Tartarus, the wicked and the condemned met their fate. It was a place where the souls of the vilest criminals and traitors were confined, their deeds etched upon the walls of the chasm, serving as a grim reminder of their sins. But Tartarus was not merely a prison of punishment, it was also a realm of cosmic balance. It served as a counterpoint to Elysium, the realm of eternal bliss and paradise for the virtuous souls. In the intricate tapestry of the afterlife, Tartarus was the dark thread that wove its way through the heavens, reminding all beings of the consequences of their actions. The stormy pit of Tartarus lay deep beneath the foundation of the earth, where the whispers of the condemned souls resonated like haunting melodies, carrying the weight of their remorse and despair. Eros, the very essence of love, desire, and attraction that underlies the entire fabric of creation, was next to come into existence. A divine being of radiant beauty, with wings that glisten like the morning dew, and eyes that held the secrets of the universe. Eros held sway over the hearts of all beings. His arrows were not of gold or lead, but of pure energy, capable of kindling the most intense passions and binding souls together in an eternal dance of affection. Eros was the architect of the most profound connections, not just between mortals but among gods and even the elements themselves. He was the embodiment of the forces that shaped the world, the spark that ignited the cosmic dance of creation. 
His love could unite the fiercest of enemies, tempering their animosity and giving rise to newfound camaraderie. His influence rippled through the heavens, uniting deities in love's tender embrace. The celestial bodies danced in the skies, the sun chasing the moon in an eternal pursuit of adoration, guided by the unseen hand of Eros. Being an integral part of the cosmic order, Eros brought order and harmony to the swirling chaos, his touch infusing the primordial elements with purpose and passion. But Eros's power was not without its complexities. Love, in its infinite forms, could bring both blissful joy and heartbreaking sorrow. Eros reveled in this duality, for it was through the contrast of emotions that the depth and beauty of love were truly revealed. As the chaos continued to intertwine, she gave raise to two children, Erebus and Nyx. Erebus, the embodiment of darkness, materialized from the deepest recesses of the abyss, his form enveloped in an ethereal cloak of shadow. Erebus encircled the world with his dark mists and filled the deepest hollows of the world. His presence embraced the hidden realms beyond mortal understanding. He held dominion over the primeval darkness that cloaked the earth before the first light of dawn, the velvety void where secrets whispered and dreams took flight. In the embrace of Erebus, the underworld thrived, a realm beyond mortal sight where the spirits of the departed found solace and rest. As the first shadows stretched across the land, Erebus's domain beckoned them, guiding them to the afterlife. In the heart of Erebus, the most profound mysteries of the cosmos found refuge. It was a place where the ancient spirits of night and darkness danced in ethereal harmony, their celestial footsteps echoing through the void, unveiling secrets only the gods themselves could fathom. He permeated the hearts of mortals with dreams and fears, their subconscious thoughts weaving intricate tales in the dark of night. He whispered in the minds of poets and artists, inspiring their most haunting and mysterious creations, and he stirred the imaginations of astronomers who looked to the stars and contemplated the vastness of the cosmos. In the twilight of time, as the sun dipped below the horizon and the world surrendered to the soothing embrace of darkness, Erebus stood as a sentinel guarding the secrets of the cosmos. His presence was a reminder that even amidst the shadows there was beauty and wonder to be found, and that within the darkness lay the seeds of creativity waiting to bloom like stars in the vast expanse of the night sky. Yet Erebus was not a solitary figure. He was part of a divine duality, a counterpart to Nyx, the goddess of night. In the deepest reaches of the cosmos, where the night sky was draped with the jewels of the heavens, there emerged a deity of ethereal beauty and profound mystery. Her name was Nyx, the goddess of the night, and she was a figure of mesmerizing allure and timeless grace. As the sun dipped below the horizon and the world surrendered to the soothing embrace of darkness, Nyx emerged, spreading her velvety cloak across the land, transforming the world into a realm of enchantment and dreams, obscuring the shining light, bringing night to the earth. Yet, Nyx was not just a goddess of tranquil beauty, she was a formidable force, a deity to be both revered and respected. Her realm was a sanctuary for creatures of the night mysterious and otherworldly beings that roamed the darkness. From the graceful owls to the elusive foxes, every nocturnal creature bore the mark of Nyx's touch. She cast her spell upon the minds of dreamers, guiding their nocturnal adventures through the labyrinth of the subconscious. In her realm, the stars twinkled like diamonds in the midnight sky, and the moon bathed the world in its silver radiance. Nyx's presence was a symphony of whispers, the soft rustle of leaves, and the ethereal glow of fireflies dancing in the night. It was a time when mortals found respite from the toils of the day, and the veil between reality and the realms of the imagination grew thin. Nyx, the goddess of the night, stands as a reminder of the enchanting allure of the hidden realms and the captivating power of darkness to stir the depths of the human soul. Together, Erebus and Nyx personified the mysterious and enigmatic aspects of the cosmos that exist beyond the reach of the sun's rays and human understanding. Their divine union symbolizing the profound unity of darkness and night. From her union with Erebus, the primordial god of darkness, came forth a myriad of powerful beings, among which were two more protogenoi, Aether, the god of light, and Hemera, the goddess of the day. 
In the realm of the primordial gods where the heavens sparkled with celestial wonders and the earth teemed with mythical creatures, there was a deity of unparalleled brilliance and radiance named Ether. Ether was the ethereal personification of the bright upper air, a radiant force that breathed life into the heavens themselves. His very presence illuminated the cosmos, filling the skies with an ethereal glow that rivaled the sun's rays and casting a soft glow across the vast expanse of the heavens as if a thousand sunsets had converged into a single celestial being. Ether was not a god of the earth or the sea, nor was he a deity of the dark and mysterious underworld. Instead, he ruled over the bright upper air, the rarefied atmosphere that breathed life into the heavens and connected the celestial realms with the mortal world below. Ether was not merely a radiant figure, he was a divine essence that flowed through the fabric of existence. He was the very air that gods and mortals breathed, the invisible force that carried the prayers of the faithful and the whispers of the wind, bestowing vitality, a gift that sustained gods and mortals alike. He embraced all living beings in his benevolent embrace, nourishing their souls with the essence of life itself. Ether, the radiant spirit that unites the heavens and the earth, stands as a testament to the eternal beauty and interconnectedness of the cosmos. But Ether's realm was not one without challenges. Amidst the celestial brilliance, he battled the essence of darkness, ensuring that the celestial spheres remained in perpetual harmony. It was a never-ending dance, a cosmic symphony in which Ether's radiant light vied with the shadows of Erebus. Hemira was the celestial embodiment of daylight, the ethereal and luminous force that heralded the dawn and banished the shadows of darkness. Hemera was not a deity of mythic tales and epic battles. Instead, she ruled over the realm of daylight, the luminescent hours that stretched between the darkness of night and the splendor of the sun's zenith. As the first rays of dawn kissed the horizon, Hemera emerged, spreading her luminous wings and painting the heavens with a tapestry of colors. With each step she took, the world awakened from its slumber. Flowers unfurled their petals to bask in her warm embrace, and creatures of the earth stirred from their nests to greet the light. She was the divine messenger of the day, a figure who bridged the celestial realms with the earthly domain. As she journeyed across the sky, Hemera brought blessings to mortals and gods alike. She bestowed the gift of clarity upon thinkers and philosophers, inspiring them to contemplate the mysteries of the universe in the bright light of day. She warmed the hearts of lovers, casting a tender glow upon their affections and illuminating the path of devotion. But Hemera's presence was not merely a fleeting moment of brilliance. Her essence lingered throughout the day, guiding the hours with the steady rhythm of the sun's passage. She danced through the azure expanse, her golden radiance weaving through the clouds like threads of magic. Yet even amidst the splendor of the day, Hemera's realm was not without its challenges. She was locked in an eternal dance with her mother Nyx, the goddess of night, their celestial embrace a constant reminder of the cyclical nature of existence. As the cosmic forces and protogenoi continued to make their presences known, Gaia, through Parthenogenesis, birthed the Uria, the mountains, Pontus, the sea, and Uranus, the sky. The Uria were the spirits of the mountains and the raw power that shaped the land. Each mountain peak and rocky crag bore the indomitable mark of these divine beings, a testament to their ancient and enduring existence. As the very bedrock of the earth, they held the secrets of the world's foundation and the stories etched in stone since time immemorial. The Uria were primordial gods who personified the mountains. These were not mere mortals, nor were they gods dwelling on Olympus. They were the living embodiments of mountains themselves, their colossal forms reaching towards the heavens, their bodies adorned with lush forests, sparkling streams, and snow-capped peaks. They stood as guardians of the earth, their ancient souls entwined with the very bones of the planet. Each mountain had its own unique spirit, its own personality that shaped the landscape around it. The Uria were not mere immovable giants. They were living beings with passions and emotions and they were not immune to the intrigues of the divine realm. They forged alliances and rivalries, their peaks echoing with the clash of titanic forces and the rumble of quaking earth. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting the mountains into a tapestry of twilight hues, 
the Urea seemed to come alive with a mystical presence. It was a time when the ancient spirits of the mountains stirred, whispering ancient secrets to those who dared to listen. Where the seas roared with untamed power and the depths held secrets beyond mortal comprehension, there was a primordial deity known as Pontus. Pontus was not merely a god of the seas, but the embodiment of all waters that cradled the world. From the roaring waves of the open ocean to the tranquil ripples of a secluded pond, every body of water owed its existence to Pontus's divine touch. He was the very lifeblood of the earth, a primordial force that shaped the very contours of the world's surface. Pontus, the living embodiment of the vast and tumultuous sea, was a force of nature that commanded respect and stirred both fear and awe in the hearts of mortals. With each wave that crashed upon the shore, Pontus stirred the imagination of mortals and gods alike. Yet the seas were not just a realm of benevolence. They held dangers and mysteries that tested the courage of those who dared to explore their depths. Pontus was both feared and revered, for he was not a god to be trifled with. His domain stretched far beyond the horizon, where the sunlight kissed the waters, and the mysteries of the deep remained hidden from mortal eyes. Within the vast oceans, he ruled over a realm of creatures, mythical and fearsome. Creatures that danced in the darkness with phosphorescent grace. The seas held tales of both wonder and terror, and Pontus presided over it all with a regal presence befitting his divine nature. As the sun dipped below the horizon and the waves embraced the land in a timeless ebb and flow, Pontus's presence seemed to stretch into eternity, a reminder that the seas held secrets that even the gods could not fully fathom. Lastly, there was Uranus, the divine personification of the sky itself. Uranus's presence extended across the vast expanse above, stretching as far as the eye could see and beyond. He was not a deity confined to a specific location or realm. He was the very breath of the cosmos, the intangible force that enveloped the world. Uranus was a figure of immense power and authority, his domain reaching from the highest heavens to the earth below. His gaze penetrated the depths of the cosmos, witnessing the grand tapestry of existence with unwavering clarity. Uranus was the celestial vault, the infinite expanse of stars and galaxies that adorned the night sky. As night descended, he emerged with his celestial court, each star a radiant soul that danced in the dark embrace of Nyx. But Uranus's rule over the heavens was not limited to the nighttime. He presided over the daylight hours as well, his presence woven into the azure canvas above. He was the guardian of the celestial order, ensuring that the sun, the moon, and the stars moved in harmonious orbits, casting their luminous glow upon the earth. As the embodiment of the sky, Uranus was not a passive observer. He wielded his power over the mortal realm as well. It was from his breath that the winds were born, carrying both gentle zephyrs and tempestuous storms across the land. The rain that nourished the earth was also under his command, as were the thunder and lightning that flashed in the darkened skies. Uranus's domain was a realm of dynamic forces, where the elements converged and clashed in a symphony of cosmic proportions. The cosmic dance of creation continued, as each deity took their place in the intricate tapestry of existence. They also gave rise to countless more deities, their powers all interwoven to shape the universe. In this cosmic dance of gods and forces, the universe found its rhythm, and creation unfurled like a grand tapestry, its threads interwoven in divine harmony. From the boundless expanse before the birth of time, the world emerged, a realm of wonders and mysteries beyond mortal comprehension, a testament to the eternal beauty and complexity of existence. Yet, amidst the celestial harmony, a majestic connection of great significance was beginning to emerge. The union of Gaia and Uranus was set to bring forth powerful progeny, a lineage destined for greatness that would alter the course of the cosmos forever.